Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on finding the maximum point of a quadratic graph. Now in the previous video we saw how to find the minimum point of a quadratic graph. So if we had a quadratic that looked like that, we had a way of finding the coordinate of the minimum point. And the way we did that was to complete the square. So we're still going to do the same thing to find the maximum point. We're going to complete the square. So if we just write out this equation again, but we should write it such that the x squared term is first, so we've got minus x squared, or let's just say minus 1x squared, so the number on the front of the x squared is clear. Then we put the x term, so plus 4x and plus 3. So that should be your first step to put the terms in order so you have x squared first, then x, then the constant term, which is the term without the x. And then we need to complete the square. Now, it's slightly harder when you have a number in front of the x squared. And do watch my video on how to complete the square when you have a number in front of the x squared, which is not 1. So what we do is we factorise that minus 1 in front of the x squared out of the first two terms. So if we take the minus 1 out, and we'll just leave the plus 3 at the end, minding its own business. Minus 1 times what is minus 1x squared? Well, it's x squared. And minus 1 times what is plus 4x? Well, it's minus 4x. And then, inside this bracket, we're going to complete the square. Now, remember how we complete the square? We halve the number in front of the x, so it'd be x minus 2 squared. And then we square that number, so the minus 2 gets squared to become 4. And then we throw away that 4. So we complete the square inside this bracket, so we have a bracket within a bracket. And then the final step is to expand out this outer bracket. So we do minus 1 times x minus 2 squared, which is minus 1 x minus 2 squared. We don't expand out further because we'll just get back to where we started. And minus 1 times minus 4, this is what students often forget to do. They forget that that minus 4 needs to be multiplied by that minus 1 to become plus 4. And we've still got that plus 3 hovering at the end. And then if we just tidy that up a bit, plus 4 plus 3 is 7. So we get this. Now we previously saw that if we had, say, um, something like this, we had x plus 3 squared plus 2, and we wanted to find the minimum point, we would negate whatever that number is, so the plus 3 would become minus 3, and we use that value at the end as the y value. And I'm not going to go through why we do that again. I do explore that in the previous video. But you just negate that and use that as the x and y value. Now, it's exactly the same here to find the maximum point. The maximum point, we just ignore that minus 1 in the front, and we negate the number just after the x, so that minus 2 becomes plus 2, and we use a number at the end to get 7 as the y value. And that is the final answer. The reason it works is that if I write this uh, in a more convenient form, like 7 minus x minus 2 squared, we want to make y as big as possible, because at this point here, y should be as big as possible. Now, if we're subtracting something, remember I said in the previous video that anything squared has to be at least 0. So, if I was subtracting something that's at least 0, the best I can do, if I want to make y as big as possible, is to subtract the smallest number possible. And because this has to be at least 0, I should subtract 0 itself. Now, to make this 0, x should be 2. So if x was 2, you get 2 minus 2, which would be 0. And that's why it works.